Coming off of a season that did see a few good games, though, for the majority of the season, both the offense and defense played subpar, and we ended up very much missing the playoffs, finishing 4 and 13. Now, as we begin today's episode, we're going to be going through the entirety of the offseason plus the regular season of season two and seeing if we do make the playoffs. So, first off, let's just see how the first season ended looking at the recap and we did have a division rival in the super bowl though the seahawks lost 35 28 chargers win their first super bowl with patrick mahomes the mvp you can see the yearly awards on the right hand side we really didn't have anyone in the running for much though puka nakua was second for offensive rookie of the year but did not win anything and we did end up having one retiree after the season ended in Nevin Lawson, he was a backup cornerback for us, so it's not really going to affect us all too much. But the first main task we need to take care of is re-signing some of our players. And instead of going through each of these individually like we have, I'm just going to show you the re-signings that we need to make, show you if we did make them, and then kind of show you who we let go. And obviously, Dalton Kincaid, we're gonna wanna bring back. He does not have a lot of interest, so we're gonna have to offer some good money. Taron Johnson, very similarly, need to try to bring him back. Cody Barton was a starter for us. Again, kind of big. Isaiah Bugs, I don't believe, was a starter for us. So we can kind of see what all of our options are once we get to open free agency for the defensive line because they're all kind of low overall. Devin Tompkins has some interest in coming back. We'll see if we go after him. Same for Dorsey. Again, defensive line is a big problem that we're going to have to try to work our way out as best as possible a lot of our guys are pretty low overalls but it looks like for a majority of these guys i would like to bring back diabati again i still think that's how that's pronounced it might not be not sure but yeah a lot of these guys are going to be lower overalls and we'll see if we do end up bringing them back but the main ones for us were all at the beginning with really the first three guys and we need to try to bring them back and I guess since there are so few, we'll just show you the offers, giving a four year 10 mil per season offer to Dalton Kincaid. And he does really like the offer. So we don't have to worry about having to make sure we bring him back in open free agency. For Taron Johnson again, no interest. We're gonna give him a two year deal, about 12 and a half mil per season. And he again, likes the money. And thirdly, again, doing the same thing here, gonna boost up the money for Barton. We don't really have any other options unless we want to try to maybe trade for like a Fred Warner or a Bobby Wags if Wags didn't retire, something I didn't actually check. But we're going to go a three year. That's going to be seven mil per season. And we did end up bringing back all of the big guys. We'll let everyone else walk and go probably try to bring them back at a cheaper rate than we would have to pay here in open free agency and see if we could bring in anyone else. And in open free agency, we would bring in a pair of new guys. Bobby Wag's gonna step in. If he starts, we'll see. At least gonna be a mentor. He's, I believe, actually the highest overall of any of the middle linebackers, though. We have some younger guys we might wanna get a little bit more involved. Again, we'll take a look at, before we start the season, who's in the starting lineup and where we best fit. We're also gonna be bringing in Taysom Hill as kind of a do it all kind of guy. I am curious at what his quarterback ratings are, though most likely he's probably gonna be playing some form of a hybrid tight end fullback, maybe even a little bit of some running back. We ended up bringing back a lot of guys as well. Tonga is back. I don't remember if we had Jonah Williams last time, but we did bring him in. DJ Davidson is another one I'm not sure we had, but now do. Brought in Crookshank, I think is a new guy for us. Brought back Lopez. John, as we decided we're gonna call him. Devin Tompkins is back. Ren is back. Galea? I'm probably butchering that one. He is back and Daish is also back. So outside of the top two guys, nothing splashy, but again, those top two guys are both 34. So it's gonna be a one year kind of thing before they most likely retire at 35. But now we could focus towards the draft. And taking a look at the mock draft five to help us get prepared, we see we currently have the third pick and they have us currently listed with Kenny Whitfield around two to three. We're definitely not doing that, but we do have an option that I wasn't quite expecting. And that is that corner, Jeremy Dennard 
out of Utah. A round one to two is actually a top five talent. So we definitely are gonna be going after Jeremy Dennard. He's 5'10", 191, 22 years old, aggressive ball hawk, high motor, rips the ball out from runners and shows good discipline. On top of that, he runs between about a 4.42 and a 4.37. So he's a fast guy with a great 20 yard shuttle and three cone, not a great broad jumper, but does have a good vert, not extremely strong, though despite that does at least have the B press. The play recognition is lacking. It's a D, but he does have B awareness with A man coverage and B zone coverage. Tackling is a C, so he's probably gonna be more of an outside corner. And we have at least our top two. We could use that third. And Jeremy Dennard very much could be that guy. Now past him, there's really not a lot of top end talent to take a look at. On the offensive side, there is Kenny Whitfield and I'm not all too impressed with his skill set. He's around two to three. And he has some pretty good top end speed, though the acceleration and agility isn't quite there. And on top of that, his moves all but non-existent with Juke and Spin both being a D, Stiff Arms a D, Trucking is an F. His ball carrier vision is a C to an F, though he can break some tackles that is a B. So I'm not all too intrigued with that talent. I think we have enough guys there. There is Niles Terrell, around three to four, but a true round two to three. Now again, his skill set is interesting to me. He's listed as a playmaker and he runs a solid mid four fours. Nothing really sticks out in terms of his physicals, just average across the board. His route runnings aren't anything special. He doesn't have great release, but he could catch the ball just in traffic struggles. So there is some intrigue here. If he falls to a spot where we have a pick, we could definitely make that selection. But for the majority, the offensive guys really aren't speaking to me very much. There was one interesting potential and drafted offensive lineman in Don Hendricks, 23 years old. Not extremely strong, but he does have some decent finesse blocking, though he's going to be more towards the run. So probably not going to be an immediate starter for us. But if we can pick him up in a late round or even undrafted, he could probably be a serviceable backup. But of course, we do need some help along the defensive line. And there is Malik Spiller, who does, again, have some interesting abilities, though potential and drafted. He's 6'5", 299, so a pretty big dude, 22 years old, out of Arizona. Listed as a run stopper, he runs a sub 5 second 40, but a lot of strength in his game. The skills are where I'm intrigued here, because he has B power moves with C block shedding, and he's listed as a run stopper. So those are probably pretty close. They're probably not very high, but I feel like he could rival a good majority of the starters we have for this defensive line that we do need as much help as possible. So Malik Spiller is definitely on my list. There's Bill Fowler, who did seem intriguing with that B potential finesse moves, but that's a B to a D, so wasn't sure there. We don't need another run stopper at middle linebacker. I don't trust outside linebackers with cover skills, even though the zone is an A. It's never actually that good. We talked about Dennard and past him, not a whole lot. So there's about three, maybe four guys I would like to pick up from this draft class. Now, if we do, great. If not, I don't think I'm gonna be all too hard pressed. I really just wanna get Dennard and that's the main worry for us in this draft. So let's start the draft. And as mentioned, we are the third pick. So we just need to make sure Dennard doesn't go in the top two. And the Colts with the first selection, they select Douglas out of Ole Miss, a different cornerback. So our guy still there in the Jets with the number two selection go with quarterback Lucas Turner out of UCLA. And I'm not going to try to trade back. I'm not trying to min-max anything here. There's really one top guy for us to go after and I'm not missing out on him. So it's going to be Jeremy Dennard with a hidden dev, 93 speed, 92 acceleration, 90 agility, 89 change of direction, and 88 jumping. Strength, not there. But all in all, he should be a solid corner that's gonna be a day one starter. And on top of that, we also have the 14th pick in this round. So we'll see what we can do. We're gonna jump to our selection. Again, we're not making any pick here, but what we could maybe do is make a trade. 
And that trade is gonna be for Brandon IU. Gonna bring in another receiver. We had our top two. And we have a lot of old guys as well. Now with Ayuk, they would want that current first round pick, a third round pick, and then two years from now, a fourth round pick. I think that would actually work out pretty well for us, especially compared to the whole bundle that they were also considering in the future. So we're going to trade away two picks from this season and one two years from now and bring in a 90 overall receiver. And that leaves our receiver group with Brandon Ayuk, Puka Nakua, and Romeo Dobbs as our top three. Then we're going to have Tim Patrick, who did have a solid year last year, but he's 30 years old. I feel like he needs to be that next guy off the bench kind of player. And Nikhil Harry is definitely never going to be at that same level. But this seems like a much better group to put around Zach Wilson and hopefully considering the offensive line that we do have, where we really don't have a whole lot of very good players, we could get the ball out quickly. Now that does still leave us with the third pick here in the second round. We also have the 14th pick in the third round. There was that, obviously there was that receiver that's around two to three. I imagine he's still there and he is. Do we need to go after him this early? I just don't feel like we do. If he is there, with the third round pick, the earlier third round pick, we could definitely go after him. But I feel like with this pick, we should trade back for potentially loading up for next year's if we do need to go to a draft. And hopefully there's going to be a bit more for us in that one. So really, we're looking for a 2025 first or second round pick. And we're not going to get that with the Bears nor the Browns. We do get Texans offer a second this year. And there is a second for next year and the following year, plus a fifth round this year for the Minnesota Vikings. That one does seem intriguing. Or with the Steelers, we get a first rounder next year with a fifth this year and a seventh next year. That one's probably the next best one. And after looking at the rest of them, it was barely the best one. There was a couple other teams that offered a sixth rather than the fifth this year. So we're gonna go with the Steelers dropping out of the second round entirely. Now, of course, is our guy still there? We say our guy, the guy that we would target in this spot. Again, we weren't too high on him, though is probably the best of the remaining talent, and he is still there. Now, potentially we might go ahead and pick up Kenny Whitfield. Again, I'm not a huge fan of that skill set. But in terms of just bringing in the best talent, he might be the next best guy to go after. But we're going to go with Niles Terrell next, really loading up at the receiver group. And surprisingly, he is a hidden dev. I guess he did go up from his projection. 91 speed, 91 acceleration, 92 agility with 87 change of direction and 80 jumping. And again, just going BPA, that would end up being Kenny Whitfield. Hoping he ends up being better than what these skills look like and we just have to adjust how we view running back skills similarly to what I've had to do with receivers and hopefully, like I said, these are going to be better. But it is Kenny Whitfield next. He is a normal dev, though it does have good speed, 94 speed, 90 acceleration, 87 agility with 86 change of direction, 76 jumping and 69 strength. Now we do have some day three talent. We already picked up a running back and a receiver, so I really don't think we need to go that way. Could we go early for Don Hendricks? At a four, don't think so, but potentially with a five or the seventh, we could go after Hendricks as well as the edge rusher in Spiller. There is Max Daniels, who's a day three, would go better potentially towards a round four. And outside of the two guys over on offense, those are all of the current projected talent players. So taking a look further here at Max Daniels, he's 5'11", 230, played at UNLV, runs a 4'6", pretty much about a 4'6", with the average there. He's not super strong, but he's a very quick guy who does have good zone coverage. Don't know about the man again. This is for an outside linebacker, so who knows if it's actually that good, but it's BPA here, and that would be Daniel. So we're going to end up picking him up. He is a normal dev with 84 speed. Expected a little bit higher there, but 91 acceleration, 82 agility, 77 change of direction, and 80 jumping with 70 strength. Now jumping forward to late on in the fifth round, Hendricks is still available, 
and Spiller is still available. Now, I feel like we need to weigh more towards Malik Spiller here because we are so thin. Well, we're really thin on both sides, but we really need someone for the defensive line. He has the strength. He has potential to be some dual threat with some block shedding in, listed as a run stopper, but has the higher power moves. Does have some good play rec. Awareness, a little bit to work on, but I think we go Spiller. He's a normal dev with 90 strength, 79 acceleration, 67 speeds. Definitely probably going to be that nose tackle. And as we jump forward to our final pick, third in the seventh round, no drama. Hendricks is still there. So we will be drafting a offensive line player and a defensive line player. We pretty much got all of our guys. Hendricks, is he going to be able to play day one? We're going to have to find out as he is a normal dev with 85 strength, 83 acceleration, 64 speed. And we definitely found some nice ratings here with this group. I didn't expect to actually draft this amount of players. I figured we'd probably push some further on, but let's start with the top. Jeremy Dennard, 77 overall with that hidden dev. Definitely more focused towards the man, but pretty even spread there. With a 57 tackling, definitely going to focus him more on the outside. Press will need a little bit of some work, but he has 74 catching, plus has that aggressive play ball tendency, so hopefully that will lead to some interceptions for us, some turnovers. All in all, a really solid pick that I was not expecting we would have with this first draft class, so that is great. As for Niles Terrell, he's going to be a 71, so pretty much coming in and essentially taking over for Nikhil Harry. He has a little bit of some route running, some things to work on, but he definitely can be developed into that next guy off the bench. Specifically for the outside, I feel like that would work out pretty well, especially with his build, though he could probably play a little bit in the slot if need be. The catch in traffic, though, is lower, so we'll probably stick him to the outside. As for Whitfield, he's a 68, which is higher than I was expecting. The Juke is definitely higher than I was expecting at an 81. Spin at a 73, that feels a lot more likely. Ball carrier vision is a bit of a problem, though can he return punts? 82, that's probably going to be his main job for at least this next year. Does have 72 catching, so he could be at least a developmental third down back, perhaps? Just get him the ball out in open space so he doesn't have to worry about the vision. As for Max Daniels, took the shot on him, and he actually has some decent coverages. 65 zone and 62 man is not awful. Block shedding, though, is pretty bad down at a 61, so he's going to be developmental for sure. We'll see if he makes the team this season or if he's going to be a practice squad player. As for Spiller, he's a 65, currently at right end. That might go up a little bit when we switch to DT. He has 70 power moves, 70 block shedding. He's got some strength, and he's very similar to a lot of the defensive linemen we have. They're all in that same area. Around a 69 to about 65 is the group of what most of our defensive linemen are. So we'll see who just ends up playing better. And lastly, Don Hendricks is a 67. Now he's definitely gonna struggle with the power game. He's not fantastic with the finesse. He's gonna struggle in pass pro. So sticking him honestly at center would probably be a pretty good spot for him. And we're just gonna say that he played a little bit of center his sophomore year of college. Why not make things seem a little bit more realistic because he's not a tackle by any means, specifically a left tackle. You could. Potentially play him at guard, but center is going to get the most amount of help. And that's where I think he would fit best. And without any further ado, this is the starting lineup going into season two. So obviously Zach Wilson going to be starting quarterback. Now I did take a look at Taysom Hill. His quarterback rating actually leaves him at a 70 overall. So he's probably going to be our emergency quarterback, that QB3. But he will be starting at fullback. Taysom is moving around everywhere with this offense. But the starting spot will continue to be Zach Wilson. Now at running back is going to be Zach Moss. Running back two is going to be Taysom Hill, then Eno Benjamin, then the rookie in Whitfield. At the receiver spot, we do not have Taysom Hill listed anywhere here. But it's going to be Ayuk and Nakua as the starting one and two. Whenever we go out in a three spread, it's going to be Ayuk and Dobbs on the outside. And Nakua is going to play the slot. As for the offensive line, no real difference from last season, though we are starting the rookie in Hendricks at center. 
He's the best possible guy we have for that role. Kincaid is going to be tight end one still, and we've moved Nikhil Harry to tight end, and he actually looks pretty good as a receiving threat at the tight end spot. The run blocking is not great, but we're focused on spreading wide and getting the ball out through the air. So it ends up working out pretty well there. As for tight end three, it's gonna be Taysom Hill. We still have Cole Turner, and he's going to be tight end four. As for the defense, we're gonna be shifting around this defensive line quite a bit just to make sure we min-max the ratings pretty much. But for the base packages, we're gonna have Tonga, Fotu, and Williams as the starters there. These guys are all focused on who has the best block shedding. As for the linebackers, it's gonna be Bobby Wags and Lloyd with Barton next up. Outside rushers, Diabati and Reed. Reed was really good last year. We need to see more from everyone else. Safety-wise, the same. Marcus Williams free. And Justin Blackman, I want to say. Julian Blackman, my bad. But they're still going to be the starting safeties. Burgess is going to be the primary backup for both spots with Crookshank as that third option. Cornerbacks, it's going to be the Johnson guys on the outside. And then the rookie, Dennard is gonna be that nickel guy. None of these top three really have fantastic tackling ability, but Dennard has the most hit power, so he slots in there pretty well. As for the specialist, going off of that, Dennard is gonna be the slot corner. As for the rush line, Reed is gonna be playing the rush left end with Guy and Williams being the rush GTs and Tonga at right end. Basically, we put out the guys, whoever had the highest either power moves or finesse moves. They're out there. Hopefully, we'll see more from this defensive line. Lloyd and Wagner are going to be the primary sub backers with Barton as that third option. We talked about Nakua in the slot. We could have, and he's a slightly higher overall, started Taysom Hill as our third down running back, but we're going to keep Moss there so he tries to, so we can get him to develop a little bit more because this could very well be Taysom Hill's last season. As I want to say he's 34. But he's going to be the primary backup at running back, primary starter at fullback, and the primary backup at tight end. So we're getting him as involved as possible. And obviously mentioned that he is going to be the uh, emergency quarterback. As for the special teams, kicker punter are the same. Returner is going to be Terrell, followed by Whitfield. Now, before we jump into the first game, do need to show you what this next draft class has in store for us. And there's actually some promise to it. As we take a look, we have a total of 17 options, or 17 prospects. There is another draftable receiver in Jamichael Blade. Fun name, do we go after him? Who knows, we'll see what the overalls look like. A lot of potential in draft along this offensive line, but there is a round one to two at center in Gavin Richter, which is fantastic. We need as much help as possible for the offensive line. Round one to two there, there's also a day three still at center in Adam Raymond. Now for the defensive line, there is Damian Weeks around three to four right end, 6'4", 265, so he might be able to flex between a interior defensive lineman and an exterior defensive lineman, again, depending on what some of those ratings look like, though there is also an outside linebacker, Adrian Sharp. At 6'4", 253, he could be an edge rusher, and I surely hope he is as a top five prospect. There is also a day three, Free safety, Eric Kennard. We don't necessarily need any more safeties, but we could use some younger depth. So there is some good potential players at some areas of need. Edge rusher, we need it. Defensive line, we need it. Offensive line, we need it. So some really key spots that we're going to hopefully get some drafts in if we do not make the Super Bowl this season. But speaking of this season, let's get it underway as we kick it off against the Buffalo Bills, they're an 84 across the board. Our offense is up to an 80. Defense at a 77 for an overall of a 78. And hopefully we just see the team just be more consistent. That's what they lacked last year. So let's get this season, as we keep talking about it, underway. did not see much change throughout our first offseason. We brought back a lot of guys. Bobby Wags joins us, and we do have the rookie corner 
Though it's going to be a pass up top. Going to find, I believe, that is Adams with a gain of 22 to start off the season. But we're going to need to see this whole defense step up. We should be solid in the DB group. Pretty good at linebacker as well as the D-line. We need to see big plays from as they at least get in the face of Richardson. Force a throw behind the line, loss of three. And in a way, I guess you could kind of count that as a sack. They force that throw. We'll give it to the D-line. They need any amount of praise they can get as it's second and 13 going up top. We'll find their target, but not going to get by the rookie in Denner. But this is an impressive offense for the Buffalo Bills. Olave and Devontae Adams, their top receivers. As it's third and six, they go up top for Adams. Going to pick up that first down before getting picked up and slammed down himself. But definitely need to see this defense flying around and making plays as much as possible. As they go the run down the middle, that's slowed down, but it's going to be a pretty good gain for getting hit in the backfield. Gain of seven for Pierce. And a few amount of looks, I would say, from the Bills, though it's a lot of quick throws as they find Olave for another first down. Richardson opens five of five as they now go under center with a tight single back set. It will be a handoff right down the middle, met by the linebackers, and stopped pretty quickly for a gain of two. Lloyd and Bobby Wags teaming up there. Love to have Bobby Wags on my team. One of my favorite linebackers watching growing up outside of, you know, like, Lewis, who's probably one of the big ones, a good stop there again, the tandem at linebacker. I'm hoping those two end up working out pretty well. The only thing that could be better is if we traded for Fred Warner, but I doubt that's even possible. Third and eight. They set up the screen and met immediately. Give me a name here. I believe that is Tonga with the stop. Fourth and 11 of 23. We force the field goal. So the defense bends, but they do not break, and now the offense has their first chance. Now, no more excuses here for Zach Wilson. He's got plenty of options as it's going to be a drop across the middle. Believe that one intended for Dobbs. It was tight coverage there at the, the catching point, but either way, we need to make those catches. But yeah, there's plenty of options for Wilson, and we need more than that. Now the defender in his face, but you got to be able to have the dump off to the running back. Now an empty set here, third and long. Trips up top, two stacked to the bottom. Wilson from the pocket. Will evade one and diving down, giving it up. Will be fourth and seven and a punt. So while it was an okay start from the defense, offense about as flat as possible. Didn't gain anything really. As it's third and two here and they get it with her Andy Yanovich. Going to the fullback on third down, then nine more to Pierce. Second and one, five more to Pierce, who... It's really let me down in fantasy this year. Throw away and then a penalty. I was really hoping that was going to be an interception. Clearly, or apparently it was. We did get the ball. Assuming that we intercepted it. Either way, we've taken over here as we wrap out the first quarter here with a throw away. So maybe not quite. There's the last one as it will be a punt to start the second quarter. So offense really not doing anything as Olave pops off for 26 yards. I expect to give up a couple plays here and there for with this defense, but we need the offense to be competitive. Defense does hold there on third as they force the punt. Need to see if we can at least get past midfield. A first down even. Second and five, a throwaway. Third and five, and hey, there we go. Our first first down of the season. As we pick up nine more to Kincaid, we'll jump in if we get past midfield. Third and one, we get the two. Just give me one more first down here. That will do it. It's been a slow start for sure for this offense, but we could speed things up. That'd be great. Bunch down to the bottom, one up top. We do get the defender to jump, but we don't snap the ball in time for the free play. Dumping it off to Kincaid with a gain of four. Kincaid is up to a superstar. Don't remember if he had that last year or not, but important to note, as there's two stacked down to the bottom, two stacked up top. Wilson from the pocket will throw off the back foot and gets intercepted. Intended for Romeo Dobbs, but Clark takes it away. Definitely not a good start to the year for Wilson. And if he continues to struggle again, we have that other option in Taysom Hill. Knocked away by Julian Blackman. Then we only give up five. A good hold from the defense. They've done well so far in this one. It's the offense who's yet to get going. As we do pick up the first down there, a sack by Demarcus Lawrence. Second and 17, we pick up seven. Leaving third and about 10, and it's knocked away by Damone Clark. So offense still really not doing much as we hit the two-minute warning here. We'll see 
if the defense can hold before halftime, keep it a field goal game. Third and one, give up five to Richardson. As we see it again for some odd reason. First and 20, apparently there was a holding or something. As a second and 19. Six yards, third and long, we give it up and we'll watch the remainder of the first half from here. Bills do have a timeout remaining, though not using it, and they have a defensive lineman at quarterback who throws a dot to the sideline. Okay, and now Richardson back out there. I don't know. That was a new one for us. Second and four. This is going to be another throw out top. Spinning off the tacklers and nearly breaking away inside the red zone. Need to use the timeout here if they will and they will. All right, four seconds left. will be a field goal to make it a 6-0 game at half. It will be kicked from the 25, about a 35-yarder, and right down the middle, making it that 6-0 game at half. But at halftime, Zach Wilson is 4 of 12 for 34 yards, has thrown one interception. He's averaging 2.8 yards a throw. And he's ran the ball four times for 16 yards. So he's honestly been more effective running the ball than passing. So I feel like we should make a change. So we're going to send out Tyler Huntley. Unfortunately, cannot put in Taysom Hill at quarterback because he started this game listed as a fullback. And you can't just put any player anywhere. But let's see if changing the quarterback here at half makes much of a difference. Offense maybe had two or three first downs that first half, so not much of a high level that we need to see this offense perform at to surpass that as we have third and nine here after two arguably failed runs. It's gonna be a spread set here, two up top, two down to the bottom for Tyler Huntley. He was our starting quarterback for a good bit last season. Because he's gonna step up here, try to make something happen, takes the hit, picked up, slammed down, and now Garrett Boyles shaken up on the play, who's our best offensive lineman. And it looks like he's got himself a shoulder, maybe collarbone issue. But on fourth and short, we're going for it here. Gonna be the first play for Taysom Hill, who is wearing zero this year. He's gonna pick up that first down in a little bit more, though a flag comes in towards the end. It looks like this is gonna back us up. Probably will have to, unfortunately, punt from there. Holding was on Cole Turner, the guy that kind of got replaced with moving Harry over to tight end and then us also bringing in Taysom Hill. So a little bit of some revenge, it seems like, as 13 yards goes to Devontae Adams. They're in plus territory. The gain of two, second and eight. They pick up six for a third and short that they get another eight on. Defense has done pretty well up to this point, only given up two field goals. Getting a sack there, Malik Reed back again. Let us last year. They pick up 11 right after, though. Third and three, they get the first down by a yard. And then a touchdown the following play. Defense, though, only giving up 14 points as they do go for two and convert. Need to see more from the offenses. There we go. 26 yards, Brandon Ayuk. Getting 14 more, Dalton Kincaid. Finally moving down the field here, Zach Moss. Gets seven, second and three, we lose two. Third and five, we gain two. And I want us to go for this once again. We're down 14 points. We've, I don't even think we've been down here this game. So let's not waste it. Need to pick up a first down here. We're gonna scramble. Huntley down the middle. He'll take some contact, but down inside the 10. And we might just have to be playing a little bit of hot hand at quarterback this year as we're going to head inside the third, inside the fourth quarter as we're down 14-0, looking for our first points. And again, potentially, if neither of these quarterbacks play very well, we do have Taysom Hill. He might come back to play some quarterback as we hand this one up top. Moss down to about the six. We had a slight lane there, but it closed right as he arrived. Second and goal, we got three tight ends out there. Gonna be a play action. Huntley gonna roll towards the top. It's open spaces and beats the defender to the end zone. We finally get our first points of the second season. And it comes from the backup quarterback. But with that score, we need this defense to get us another stop. As we give up four on second and eight, leaves third and five, and we give up 27 into plus territory, the Buffalo Bills. Lose two following, second and 12. They get three back for a third and long, but convert 
by that extra yard. And then 15 more, they're inside the red zone. And that would be a great time for someone to make a big play here. Force a turnover as they hand it off down the middle with plenty of running room, breaking off of one, though there is a flag that comes in late. I did not see any face mask, so this should be backing him up, and it will. The center, Pat Elfline, called with a holding there. We'll make it first and 15. As they stick with that eye set, right back down the middle and stuffed immediately. Leaky foe two with the stop, second and 15 still. And still, they keep with the eye form. One tight receiver up top, one stead down to the bottom. They'll go again right down the middle. They know our weakness and it works out well for them there. May get third and one. Luckily, Blackman able to get over there to get the stop, but we need the big play here. As they'll go with a draw, no, it's a play action, and there's the sack from Blackman. Makes the big plays on back-to-back, -back, stopping the touchdown, and then forcing a field goal here. But we're about three minutes left. And correction, it was actually Marcus Williams making the play. Could have sworn that was Blackman's number. Maybe it's similar. But either way, we got a first and ten here, finding Kincaid just shy of the first down. As we're already near two minutes left following all the kicking. Ended up wasting about 30 seconds, so not much time here for two scores as we step up and miss our receiver down to the bottom, third and inches. With all three timeouts, I'd be okay with just running it here, making sure we at least get that first. And that's exactly what we do. Right down the middle, Moss up to the 34. Seems like an interesting spotting as we do hit the two-minute warning from there. But we're going to need this receiver crew to step up big. We have the guys. It's just if the quarterbacks and the offensive line can supply them. As we have a first and 10 going on the quick drag up top. Going to be Kincaid for another first down, though. This is not college ball. It does not stop the clock. Get back as quickly as we can. Under a minute 40 now. Huntley from the pocket going up top. And it's going to be intercepted to seal this game. That's two interceptions when intending to throw the ball to Romeo Dobbs. Well, that was definitely not the game we were hoping to see to kick off season two. Offense could barely move. Defense honestly did not do bad. Again, considering how many guys they had on the Buffalo Bills offense, holding him to 17 points is honestly pretty good. But our offense didn't move the ball. And through the rest of that first quarter of the season, we would see pretty similar play. We did at least get a win in the Patriots game, though it was a close one, 22-14. But primarily, the thing that I'm noticing is Zach Wilson is kind of just being a low-level field general. He's really not trying to will this team to anything. He had a decent game here against the 49ers. Two touchdowns, one interception, 66% completion. He's getting involved a little bit in the rushing game, just scrambling here and there, but it's just nothing big. And even in our one and only win, he didn't throw a touchdown nor an interception. 64% completion, 168 yards. I mean, very just minimal play that we're seeing from the quarterback spot. And the Dolphins game was our biggest loss, 31 to 10. We just got over 250 total yards of offense, nearly giving up 450. So all in all, we're just seeing very lackluster play from the offense. Again, another one, one touchdown, no interceptions, 66% completion, but just 172 yards. And we're just not doing much with him in the Packers game. I feel like it's going to be his last start because once again, just around that 250 offensive yards. And this time, no touchdowns, but he did throw a fumble and had 52% completion. So... I think here we need to make a dramatic change. We've given two quarterbacks a chance here, Tyler Huntley and Zach Wilson. And technically we have a third. Taysom Hill is returning to play quarterback here and we'll give him a couple games, see what he can do. He does not have fantastic throw power. He has some okay short, medium, deep, eh, but he definitely can run with the ball. And we're going to see what he can do out there. Because at worst, it's not much worse than what we've seen already. So Taysom Hill is going to get the start at quarterback in our next game. And we're going to watch at least some of it. Probably going to go through a little bit of some quarter sims here. It's against an 0-5 Dallas Cowboys team, though. They have an 84 offense, 87 defense. They're an 85 overall. They're just not putting things together. And honestly, we're not putting things together either. We're 1-4 at week six, so let's 
jump in. Quarter sim here, see if the offense starts to move a little bit, and we'll definitely jump in at some point in that second half. And we've given Hill a short week to get ready as we do go down 7-0, but we quickly answer, and we end up that with a first quarter ending 10-10. So we went down, we answered back, took a little bit of a lead for a while, and then obviously now tied. As we get through the second quarter, already seeing this offense move more than we really have much at all. We're down now a field goal. Though just bouncing back and forth, little defensive, and that's where we hit at halftime. So we scored 10 points. Still, I think, better than what we've seen so far. We'll get through the third quarter. 13-10 to start off, and we grab a lead. 17 as we now go down, 20-17 to 17 as we start the fourth quarter. We'll slow it down a little bit here. Third and two, and we pick up the first down, and, you know, Benjamin shaking up on the same play. But I feel like that's a good spot to jump in. Trying to see if Taysom Hill at quarterback can lead us back for a win here. We've only gotten one in throughout the first quarter of the season. Need to see a whole lot more in the second. As a good broken tackle there, Moss, though not getting away from the second, though Jonathan Cooper shaken up on the play. He'll head to the sideline to get that shoulder checked out. As we have second and five under center, Taysom Hill play action. Going to be our first throw we've seen from him as he throws deep and misses a wide open IU. Should have been a big play there, but these are the three quarterback options we have. Again, we saw in the upcoming draft class, no quarterback options for us. Taysom loading up to go deep and knocked away. If that one was maybe a yard or so further downfield, that's a touchdown. Instead, Murphy bunting knocks it away. But well, we are at least seeing Hill taking the shots. That's something we didn't really see with the other quarterback. So at least a little bit more aggressive play styles here. As we're going for it on fourth down, stepping up, Taysom Hill gonna just tuck and run, heading down the sideline. It's a good tackle, zero on zero as now Taysom Hill celebrating, but apparently a little shaken up. Hoping those are just some cramps that he's experiencing as he does get worked out on the table. But Zach Wilson back out there, first and 10. As he throws, finding Kincaid a little bit behind him, but Murphy Bunting is everywhere on this field today. He's made the last three plays here for the Cowboys defense. Up three points. We need ourselves at least a field goal to tie this one. As I believe that was Taysom Hill back out there. So apparently it was just some cramps. He's doing all right. As long as he leads us to a game-winning score, that would be fantastic. As it's a heavier set, two tight ends plus a receiver down to the bottom. Play action. Going across and for the touchdown no it's not the BYU to BYU connection we had Nakua in the end zone but he drops it leaving second and 10 with an empty set two up top three down to the bottom Taysom Hill across the middle this time walking in and a late hit there but Puka Nakua holds on for that one as we do take a lead now we just have to hope this defense holds on to it as they gain two on first, leave second and eight and 14 going to Juwan Jennings. He did pretty well in one of these uh, state-only challenges, if I'm not mistaken. Second and six, they get six, though somehow still have a third and one in which they convert with Zamir White in plus territory now where they throw away C.J. Stroud. Then a gain of six on the rush. Third and four, a sack from Jonah Williams. Definitely out of field goal range. And we have a chance to run out the clock and get a win and we'll see if in the first start of Taysom Hill we can do just that knock on wood fingers crossed whatever you do for good luck it will be a throw no gonna scramble headed towards the top gonna take the contact it's a big hit luckily the injury not Taysom Hill Javon Hargrave unfortunately for us that does stop the clock and no timeouts wasted. But we do have a second and one. Handing this one off for Moss, who will pick up the first down behind. I want to say that was Christensen. Just want to make sure we're letting some clock roll here. We're not taking as much time off the play clock as I wish we were. As we dump that one off to Kincaid, he also drops it. So on second and ten. We got two up top, one down below off the screen. Those are back in shotgun. Hand this one off for Moss. Trying to stretch towards the top, and he just tried to stretch too much there, but he keeps fighting as we get back and actually gain about a yard, but there is some dirty laundry on the field, and it's going to back us up. First, Kincaid had the drop on the first down play, then the holding on the next first down play, leaving us with second and 18. 
as it will be a throw. Taysom Hill, no, going to step up. Does not get the block and instead will flatten himself. Third and 12. We're at least running the play clock a little bit more here. Getting close to that two-minute warning. We're up four. We're third and long. Deep in our own territory here. Taysom Hill loading up to go deep. It's Ayuk who just can't get it. Tipped away. Again, maybe one more yard further downfield, and that's a big play. But Wallace makes the play. We'll end up having to punt. But once again, it comes down to this defense. Can they get the stop for us? Cowboys start at the 28. They need a touchdown. Field goal does them nothing. They have all three timeouts, and they start with a big pass. Upfield nearly breaking away. I want to say Christian Kirk, perhaps? Not going to get a name, but I feel like that always happens to be Christian Kirk. Receiver wearing 13, making big plays. As it's going to be another easy connection back to 13. Now can we get a name here? Yes, and it's Gabe Davis instead. All right, I like the shakeup in players. Normally he doesn't do all too well. As they go across the middle here, it's going to be inside the 25, a gain of five. As there is a minute 15 and counting. They still have all three timeouts. They need a touchdown. We also have all three timeouts in case we need some more points. As they keep bouncing off the tacklers down to the one. Stroud finds Kelsey there. They've moved the ball quickly and efficiently. Under 40 seconds now, or about at 40 seconds. They go with the no draw play action and finding is target diving. Gabe Davis puts the Cowboys in front. And with 37 seconds left, we do have all three timeouts. Can we make the plays here? We got to get down to around the opposite 35, maybe 40 for the field goal to tie this game. As we're going to have to fumble, apparently recover it. We do. And having to call a timeout immediately there. Can't really afford those. As on second and 10, we have Nakua to the sideline. Ayuk deep. We need some blocking up front, that is for sure. With the speed of Ayuk, it's just too far out in front. And they are stacking the box a little bit here on third and 10. Do they know what we're running? Halfback screen time, get this one out to Moss. Need the first down and he pushes with that first down. Second timeout called, we have one remaining. And with 19 seconds left, a single high safety. Press man on Ayuk. Can he get the release here? No, they actually do pretty well there. Taysom gonna have to step up, take what he can, picking up the first down and having to call that last time out. We are still at our own 47. First down will help us out here to get to field goal range. A hot route for Ayuk, 1v1 once again. Need the catch with the first. And getting out of bounds, but no, it's going to be jumped. Wallace makes the play. Taysom Hill in pursuit. Gets juked, but the tackle comes in from Ayu, or not Ayu, Nakua. But it's going to be a loss for us here. We really only had the one option there that had to go to Ayu on the out. Get the catch, get out of bounds, stop the clock, kick the field goal, go to OT. That was about... As much as we could do with having to call those timeouts so early on in that drive. But we saw the offense moving. Was it a perfect game from Taysom Hill? No. But he's earned himself at least a couple more to see if he could get this offense continually moving. But in the following week, we would see one of our best offensive performances yet as we would win against the 49ers 28 to 20 with slightly over 400 yards of offense. Taysom Hill 250 throwing two touchdowns was only sacked once completed 73% of his throws plus on top of that. He also ran seven more times for 38 yards and another touchdown. So he had himself a game. And he earned himself NFC Offensive Player of the Week. So that tells me Taysom Hill is going to continue to start at quarterback. And again, we're just going to continue playing the hot hand. If that's Taysom Hill, then that is Taysom Hill. At this point, we've only won two games, though, and we're about at the midway point, slightly under the midway point of the season. Seahawks are 5-1. and one. They were just in the playoffs. We did get that big win against a division rival. They moved down to 4-3. and three. Rams are 2-4. and four. We're about to play them. We're 2-5. and five. If we could get some streaks of wins forming here, we might be able to 
maybe push for a wild card spot. But through the week 12 bye, we just would not see the same success continue as we would lose three of four. But I do want to take a quick look at each of these to see how the offense was moving. And in the first matchup, we did lose to the Rams 35-14 with a little over 300 offensive yards ourselves. Though it was not a clean game by any means from Taysom Hill. One touchdown, two interceptions, 58% completion. As for his running, not all effective. In the Saints game, we had less than 300 offensive yards as we would lose 27-13, and Taysom Hill would have a very similar stat line throwing in, you know, honestly, even rushing. But we did win one, 21-14 against the Lions. Somehow we beat them despite having near 50 less offensive yards, and Taysom Hill slightly better in this one, two touchdowns, two interceptions, though 62% completion. And he would run a little bit more effective in this one. Though I do want to say Zach Moss has been pretty solid. But against the Seahawks, a game that we really needed to win, we had exactly 250 offensive yards as we would lose 28 to 10. Taysom Hill, one touchdown, no interceptions, completing 60% of his throws as she would rush five times, averaging 5.4 yards per rush. Algier is a guy who we could have on our team, though making a trade with a division rival who's constantly at the top of the division. Maybe not. We'll see what ends up happening with that if we need a second running back. But that leaves us, as I went too far back, with a handful of games here left. Six. Yeah, six games left. And we, I'm pretty sure, are well off six behind the Seahawks. So essentially, we're definitely not winning the division. We've only won three games. We would have to win out as a chance to get over 500 and maybe make the wild card and I honestly don't think that's going to happen. So what I think we do from here is we put in the young guys, get some development happening, get on over to week 18 to watch the final game of season two and get ready for another off season moving into season three. And as we have reached that final week 18, we did not win anything <laughs> between the last time we looked and now. The one thing to highlight as they nearly give up the first down on play one to Jefferson. But in the middle, you'll see a big number 90. I don't think he's actually out there on this play because Madden consistently messes with my playbook as our linebacker got decked down the middle. You give up the first down to Eckler. But definitely keep your eye out for 90. That is the rookie in Spiller. He did get a development boost after his first start out on the field. And he shot up in overall. He's now one of our better defensive linemen. As he is out on the field here, you can see him at the top of the interior of the defensive line. Hopefully we see some big plays from him today. As we nearly get the interception there, said Barton just knocks it away. That'll leave us with a third and nine. One lone to the top, two down to the bottom. Going to be a shotgun pass. Sitting in the pocket. I want to say the quarterback's Herbert, who does find their target with a first down up to the 40. From what I remember playing against the Rams in season one, they're a pretty good team. As they dump this one off underneath, gonna be picked up, slammed down by Lloyd. Debo Samuel picks up six. We'll leave him with second and four as they're down to the 33. A lot of shotgun looks here for this Rams team as they're just finding just about every single pass. We have started a majority of the younger guys throughout the last part of this season, though we do have all of the normal starting DBs out there in this one. As we send the blitz, it's picked up well, and they get their catch down inside the five. I believe that was Marcus Williams unable to make the play there. Looking towards the top part of this defensive line, see if Spiller can make the play, and he is in on it. Him and I believe that was Leaky Fotu. I believe, again, that those two are probably tied for about the highest overall, around that 71 mark. As they go fullback, dive, who fumbled, diving into the end zone. We scoop it up and we start at the one. Hughes check, coughs it up. Though they might actually credit that one to Lloyd. He was the one that Hughes check dove into, but we're starting at the inch line here with a throw, rolling, finding our targets, Nakua, with about a gain of 10. Though they leave it about the ball's length away from that first down marker as it will be a handoff down the middle. Zach Moss with a cut. We'll pick up the first down and a couple extra yards up to the 13. 
Very interested to take a look at the stats after this game just to see how everything really ended up unfolding. Obviously, we were not playing winning football, and I think it really comes down to this offensive line and the quarterback play as Zach Wilson just gave up a safety. Didn't need to be a safety whatsoever. He just kept dropping back and back and he gave it up. But it feels very fitting considering we're just talking about bad quarterback play. As we'll start to get through here a little bit quicker, Dennard made the play on that one and then a sack by Diabati. Again, I'm pretty sure it's Diabati. I remember hearing his name so many times in his uh, last season of college ball when he was playing against Stanford because he kept making all the plays. As we have third and inches here, we get the first down, a rush from Zach Wilson. Get inside the 25, we'll definitely watch Kincaid with a big play. Close, give us the first down. We'll jump in to start the second quarter, third and one, that'll do. I was hoping to see some more bigger plays this season. Again, we have a lot of talent around Zach Wilson. Just don't think he's that guy, doesn't have that chip on his shoulder. Plus this offensive line needs a whole lot of help as the fumble is also recovered by Zach Moss. Gain of four. Guess that's one way to make up for your mistake as we come out with a heavy tight end set. All of them up top will be a drop back pass here from Wilson. Gonna roll towards the pass rush. Doesn't where to go, but finally gets rid of it. Out of bounds. Really hoping that center in the draft class ends up panning out and gotta find a way to add some extra guys here. Especially with our best guy getting on the older side as Wilson scrambles and pretty much tackled himself there. Throwing himself down at the eight with a first and goal. As he gets into it a little bit with some of the defenders, but weird play. <laughs> Zach Wilson has been an interesting guy to watch. As it's a tight set here, will be another throw. Going to spin around, then find Kincaid who drops it. I feel like I said that a lot with Kincaid, despite him having that superstar dev. Might need to take a look to see what the trait is with it. As it's a read option, Wilson takes the hit down at the five for third and goal. Just need to get this ball in the end zone. We're down 2-0, a very interesting score. Basically, basically a baseball kind of score. As Wilson once again scrambling, he's gonna tuck run, but he gets tripped up from behind. So on fourth and goal, we bring out Taysom Hill here. Trying to have a little bit of some fun. We have a tight end screen option to the left-hand side and just a whole conglomerate over to the other side. As we throw this one out for Moss, who could have gotten there. The defender whiffed on the blocker, the knockaway, but Moss whiffed on catching the ball. And all in all, we whiff on any points there. We're going for it, but obviously not quite getting it. And that's what this team really seems to be as we have a third and 10. We do get the stop. We have some guys, we have some playmakers, but they're just not putting things together. As we continue on here, trying to take a lead or score any amount of points, we do pick up the first down. And with that first down, we gain another six yards to Moss, second and four, eight with a first down to Kincaid. Their first throw, then right back to Moss. It's a heavy Moss as knocked away, so maybe not going Moss there. These third and six that we do nothing and then punt. Guess we hit the two minute warning, so it kind of skips showing what happened there. Was a good punt down at about the two. As they get close to the first down, third and one, they pick up the first down. Michael Mayer getting that first down for him. They've gone his way often in this one. A penalty, Jonah Williams gonna help them out. Trying to limit points here before half. They got less than a minute to find anything and they do not pick up the first and do punt it away. 35 seconds left. Now we've got some dudes with some speed on this team and I would love to try to find them here as we do have two timeouts remaining. See what we could get opened up is Nikhil Harry who's wide open but there's a flag back in the backfield. May be a late hit, maybe it's gonna be a touchdown. We'll find out shortly from the referee and it's an illegal man downfield wiping out the touchdown making it first and 15 with 26 seconds left how crushing as we're going to go for Dobbs or apparently go for one of the backup offensive linemen on the sidelines just deflating to say the least 22 seconds left we still have two timeouts trying to get something downfield here or go across, back to Harry, but it gets intercepted. A very Zach Wilson kind of play. And now the Rams set up for some points before half. 
Just crushing there. Had the opportunity. Had the touchdown. But the legal man downfield, and somehow they don't get any points before halftime. So we do hit half. It's still two to zero. An interesting week 18 game as we do start with the ball gain of zero, then nine to the rookie in Terrell, an injury to the rookie center, but we pick up the first down, and that leaves us with maybe about a 64 overall playing center, though honestly probably not much of a disparity between the rookie center and whoever is actually out there now. I want to say we had two options. One was Ford, and then Dyche, I believe, is the other, so it might be Dyche out there now. Third and nine, a sack from Taki Taki, who could be on this team, but we just didn't need any more inside backers. Fourth and 15, a field goal would give us a lead here. And we get it with Matt Gay. Finally, some points on the board for us. Three to two, keeping with the baseball score. Honestly, even soccer score as the Rams. Trying to move down the field here. We're about midway through the third quarter. Debo with 13, 19 to Van Jefferson. As they're marching down the field, Kadarius Tony with 11, 14 to Mayer, first and goal, not into the end zone, down to the two, second and goal, they lose two, third and goal, they get the rushing touchdown from Justin Herbert, making this one a failed two-point conversion, it's now eight to three, continuing with some awkward scores here, though we would love to continue with some amount of more scores from ourselves, this offense just has not been able to do much this season. But as we start the fourth quarter here, we're gonna go for it because why not? Under center, it's a heavy tight end set. We're gonna see who's gonna leak open here. If at all, might just have to scramble for this one. Wilson gets the first down and out of bounds. And we've quick in most of this game. So let's watch this drive. See what happens as we're currently down five points. Wilson, play action. Gonna roll towards the top, set his feet going deep, has his wide open man, Romeo Dobbs, into the end zone, and we retake that lead, finding what has to be the first long ball of the season. And on top of it, we're going for two. To make this thing a field goal game, currently up one. From the pocket, across the middle, into tight coverage for the rookie. Gonna be easily knocked away by Demario Davis, and we'll keep it a one point game. And I just realized that I left my face cam on this whole time for this game, so why not? We're going to keep it up. Let me know if you like it with the face cam up or not. As we continue moving on here, Rams down the field, just steady marching, trying to take a lead as we help them out with a penalty. Second and one, they get 10, and they're at the 25. With two up top, two down to the bottom. They're down one point. Just over five minutes left in this game. Quick throw across the middle is going to be caught. And from there, they'll shake it up. Coming out with a heavy tight end set. Three up top, one down to the bottom. It will be from under center. Handing it off down the middle. Stuffed, but still finding some space. Close to the first down, though inches shy. And they really just need to move the ball. Not even an inch. That's like a centimeter, though. They throw for it. And it is complete. Debo Samuel down to the 10 for first and goal. We are under four minutes left. We have three timeouts. Though I would like to hold them to a field goal here because then a field goal for us could win it. Though right down the middle, they nearly walk it in with Eckler. Despite putting that rookie Spiller talked about at the beginning of this game out there in all starting spots, we're really not seeing him. Madden, I don't know why they changed the depth chart so much. But it's Diabati who gets shaken up on that play. Not sure if he was involved in on the hit there at the end. Either way, we did at least force the throwaway. Third and goal. Touchdown right across the middle. Kadarius Tony. I remember him going off on us in the previous game. And he might have found the winner there. Oh, that did put them up only by five points. Trying to make it a touchdown game here. Rolling and right down the middle. Barton just sat there flat-footed. And it will be a touchdown game to tie. Well, let's see if Zach Wilson can end this season on some sort of positive form here. He's been pretty bad as cornerback sack right around the edge. Loss of eight. Pretty much every time there's a pass rush, his first instinct is to run backwards. Not great. Is it going to be second and long here? We go with the play action. Going to get it out to Moss who does not get by the first defender, but makes it slightly more manageable for third and long. 
We've given up the third worst amount of sacks this season. Already given up three today, and we have third and 14 from the pocket. Another one might be happening here as Wilson will throw it away. But on fourth and long, essentially fourth in game, can we make something happen here? Zach Wilson from the pocket going deep downfield has our target and he does get the feed in. That's the rookie. And I'm not sure if it's coming through on your guys' end or just my end, but the game getting a little bit laggy here, though. We have a first and 10 just past midfield. Stepping up, Wilson going to scramble, diving underneath the incoming defender. We need a touchdown to send this one to OT. And we at least are marching down to the 41. Two up top, two down to the bottom. From shotgun, snap in, Wilson. Quick throw, dropped by the rookie that time. Made the difficult catch on the sideline, but struggles with a quick slant. Zach Wilson completing only 11 of 22 throws today. As he got one up top, three down to the bottom, including the tight end. From the pocket, rolling across the middle. Gonna go back to that rookie who gets just tossed down by the face mask. A definite penalty and definitely a fine gonna be put in his locker. And that moves us from around the 30 down to the 15. As we stick with a similar look here, though we hand it off. Moss with some space down the middle with a juke fighting down to the five for a first and goal. Under or about at a minute. Oh, as we get back to the line, definitely under a minute. A bunch up top, one down to the bottom. I'm fine just melting some clock here. We don't need to score until the end or go for it there, but I think Nakua's feet were out before the ball arrived, and that's exactly what we're going to see here. Just lack of awareness there. Essentially is just an incomplete pass, which it was going to be anyway. Second and goal. Throw up top. It's picked off to Mario Davis. Intended for Romeo Dobbs, and that will probably do it for us here. Wilson has just not been that guy, and they get a 99-yard touchdown <laughs> run the very next play. Well, it is what it is, but a strange way, I will say, to end the season. We saw some plays, but overall, Zach Wilson's just not that guy, and... Going into this next offseason, we might have to see what we could do to find a different quarterback who might just be that guy. But that brings us to the end of season two, and I feel like we lost one more game than we did last year. I want to say we we're four and 13. Could be wrong. We might have the same exact record, but we are the only team from the NFC West to not make the playoffs. And it really comes down to the quarterback play. I just don't think we've had... Anything solid, really, at that spot. We obviously had Taysom Hill, who had some interesting play here and there, but in total, we were the second worst offense. Defense, 20 seconds, so still not all too great. Zach Wilson ends his season after he started about half the year, maybe a little bit more than half the year even, with nine touchdowns, eight interceptions, 58% completion. Taysom Hill was eight and eight, 60%. And Huntley was 0-1, 81%. And honestly, we might have to give it back to Tyler Huntley if we're not able to make any change at that quarterback spot moving into the next season. Zach Wilson was sacked 24 times, Taysom Hill 9. Huntley really wasn't out there all too much, 0. Though rushing-wise, we got at least a pretty good amount of yards for Moss, though it was on a quite a few amount of carries. He averaged just under 4 yards per carry, only 3 touchdowns, and he fumbled 3 times. Taysom Hill averaged just under five yards on his carries, though only 55. Did have two touchdowns. He fumbled once. Zach Wilson, when he did run, not as effective as Taysom Hill. Three touchdowns, though, one higher, no fumble. So interesting there. The rookie running back, Kenny Whitfield, okay, but really, I mean, nothing splashy by any means. We didn't really have that number one receiver. Again, I think that's more to the quarterback play. I mean, Ayuk did not play the last half of the season, essentially, so he probably would have been close to 900, 1,000 yards, but only two touchdowns. We got to find a quarterback who can open up these receivers because the receiving group is there. Offensive line, Bowles gave up 11 sacks, seven for Freeland, six for Christensen, five for Daniels, and three for Hendricks. So putting him at center was a good spot to place him, but overall the offensive line, no, it also needs some help. Defensively, though, Devin Lloyd, 120 tackles, had only five tackles for a loss. Lawrence Guy Sr. was our leader there with 11. 
But good play here from Diabati or Diabot. I'm never going to remember what it is. Nine tackles for a loss from him. Nine tackles for a loss from Spiller. Playing more of that nose tackle into your defensive line role. Did not pick up any sacks, but we just weren't picking up any sacks anyway. Only five for Lawrence Guy as our leader. Lloyd, a middle linebacker sent on some blitzes, was our second best with three. Diabati had two. One and a half for Sewell. And then Malik Reed only had one, and that was in week one. So he took a major step back this season. And we just got to find some help for this off or for this defensive line. Bobby Wags led us in interceptions, only played half the season. Jalen Johnson had two, Lloyd won, and Marcus Williams won. Kicking wise, 14 of 17 for Gay. I mean, not awful. 30 of 30, though, good. Punting wise, near 50 yards a punt. We did not have any kick returns nor punt returns. And that leaves us with a lot of work to do. But as a quick look into what's going to happen next episode, looking at our final bit of at least scouting up to this point, we'll be able to have a few more focused scouts. The receiver in Jamichael Blade does have good release. I don't think we need any more receivers, though. Maybe we could draft him as backup at this point. As for the offensive line, there is not really any of these younger or potential undrafted guys that are really sticking out outside of Justin Flores. But that's probably going to be a backup kind of role. Gavin Richter, though, round one to two, and he's still looking pretty good. 21 years old, has great to elite strength. Going to have a little bit less finesse, but be really good in power, which is the opposite of most of our offensive line. And he's going to slot in wherever we need him to because we've got to go after him for sure. There's also a day three who doesn't look all too intriguing. Now, unfortunately, the defensive line prospects are not panning out. Damian Weeks was around three to four. He regresses to a true talent of day three with B finesse moves, has some power moves, not much block shedding. And then our top five guy, he actually falls to around two to three. So pretty big disappointment. He is a power rusher with A power moves, does have B block shed, C finesse. So I still think we got to go after him for sure. We need as much help as we can for this defensive line. Was hoping that Damian Weeks was going to jump up a little bit, not go down. And then free safety doesn't look all too intriguing. So we have some guys we have to go after due to necessity, being Adrian Sharp, Damian Weeks, and definitely going after Gavin Richter. Maybe we end up picking up the receiver in Jermichael Blade, at least just to have a fun name on the team. But all in all, kind of seems pretty similar to how this season went, or the, both seasons. There's some promise, but then it just falls short. Hopefully we can make some moves where possible. We might just have to focus more on making trades where we can to bring in talent wherever possible. Quarterback is definitely an area of need. Jordan Love, I believe, is a quarterback we could go after. Hopefully he's done pretty well to progress in these first two seasons, and maybe we're able to make a trade See what happens next time. Hit that bear on the bottom right or scroll down, hit the subscription button. But definitely make sure you're tapping that bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. This series every single Wednesday and Saturday with the traditional Rams franchise every single Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, which tomorrow will be an off-season video. It's a lot more thorough than what we do with this one. So if you like off-season videos, definitely check that one out. But until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh, it's supposed to feel